Please be advised that this video is intended for mature audience only. There will be content in here that may be triggering for some individuals, so please be advised as you are watching. Twitter has been going crazy. Facebook has been going crazy. Everywhere there are stories that are popping up from people with their Me Too stories in the Middle East, especially in Egypt right now. So the high profile case that has taken over and swept over Egypt is of the former student Ahmed Zeki. Girl, I'll just tell you right now that his name means nothing because this individual is not that smart, okay? So um, an Egyptian court on Saturday began hearing a high profile case of blackmail and sexual assault that released a wave of accusations against prominent men in Egypt. Former university student Ahmed Zeki was charged by the public prosecutor with sexually assaulting three girls under the age of 18 and threatening them along with a fourth girl with disclosing matters relating to their honor. He could be facing a life term sentence or death sentence if the prosecution proves rape with evidence. Although allegations against Zeki in his early 20s had been made before, authorities reacted after the claims went public on independent Instagram and Twitter accounts run by a campaign titled Assault Police which encouraged his alleged victims to share evidence of his behavior with the account's administrators to be used during investigations. The accounts received more than a hundred complaints related to Zeki, who is from a wealthy family dating back to his high school years. The case attracted widespread attention from media, religious figures, and women's groups in a country where rights defenders say sexual harassment or abuse often goes unpunished. A 2017 Thomson Reuters Foundation poll found Cairo to be the most dangerous megacity for women, and 99% of women in Egypt interviewed by the United Nations in 2013 said they had experienced sexual harassment. After Zeki's arrest, hundreds of women started to speak up on social media about abuse, sparking a Me Too movement, exposing several men, and also revealing a high-profile rape case that occurred in Cairo Hotel in 2014. Zeki's case has been shocking as it put into debate a deeply rooted tradition of accusing the victim, not the harasser, and justifying his actions. So... The reason why I really wanted to talk about this today is because I personally have been dealing with that same circumstances. I've spoken out about my sexual harassment and my sexual abuse in the past. I unfortunately have had three different sexual assaults, all snowballing effects from one another. So the first sexual assault that, I, that ever had occurred to me was in Egypt when I visited at the age of 16 to 17. I wasn't accompanied by a parent or a guardian. I was traveling alone with a younger cousin of mine, at least five years younger. So around that time, it was back in the early 2000s. Um, I want to say 2006 is when I was in Egypt and this had occurred. I spoke up about it immediately. I told my uncle, I told my aunt, I retold the story to several different um, individuals. And at the end of the day, they all blamed me, um, claiming that I made the story up because my parents were divorced at the time and my dad did not have a good relationship with my mother's side of the family. So the way that they rationalized it was that, well, maybe he had put it into my head to go off to Egypt and make up this whole entire story about my uncle sexually assaulting me. And when I got back, I didn't get the support, the type of um, empathy, understanding, I guess you can say from the closest individuals in my life here, my immediate family. So from that age, I, I started spiraling. And when you get rejected like that by your own family, it's a type of pain that I honestly can't begin to explain to you guys. You can, it's almost like being betrayed. 
being betrayed, feeling like you have nobody who's loyal to you, feeling as though you are not worth the fight, feeling as though you are scum at the at the end of the day because that's how they're viewing you now. They view you as worthless. They view you as a person who is damaged goods. They can't get you married off. They can't get rid of you. So now you're just a burden to the family. And that's how I was made to feel the entire time since I've gotten back from Egypt at the age of 16. At that time, I was dating this Egyptian of Rani, uh, this Egyptian of Rani guy that was here in America. When I got back from my trip and I told him what happened, thinking that I was going to get some kind of comfort or empathy or anything or understanding at least, um, was not the case. Um, that's when the second assault, the second sexual assault, actually occurred and. He had raped me. So, after that, you can probably guess as to why I started spiraling and I started to drink. I started to smoke marijuana. I started to um, never want to be home. I always wanted to be out because here at the house it was just full of all of that negative energy, that funk. The entire family calling me a whore, calling me um, a slut, call calling me all kinds of names, um, diminishing my confidence, diminishing the little self-esteem that I had left um, to the point where at one, at one point I was just stuck in bed all day. I, would, I wouldn't want to eat. I wouldn't want to get up. I didn't want to talk. Everything felt like it needed 20 times the amount of energy to do. The last assault that occurred to me just happened a few years ago, and it was by a very close family friend, somebody that I would have considered to be a cousin or brother myself. And, well, I had confronted every single one of my attackers. I confronted my uncle when it first happened back in Egypt because that was my personality. I was a strong, aggressive, assertive individual back then. I was a tomboy. I was in your face. I would tell, I was very blunt. I would tell you exactly how I feel. I would call people out. I would not give a damn. And then that completely changed. It completely changed to me being this passive aggressive individual, this um, the scared, frightened, um, anxious, depressed individ individual, it became, um, it just became very, very difficult for me to understand what occurred because every single assault that happened to me was from a Muslim guy. It was from an, an Arab, a Muslim, an Egyptian. It was... And that's not me to say that that means every single Egyptian is is like that. That is me just speaking about my own experiences, what I've encountered throughout my life. So for me, what the difficult part about it all, the difficult part about it all was the fact that I now was stuck between a rock and a hard place because I then had to figure out how did it make sense that Islam, Muslims, the, the, the thing in my life that has been put in front of my face, that has been drilled into my head, that we are held to a higher standard, we are supposed to be forgiving, and we're supposed to never hurt another individual. We're never supposed to be rude even. Just being rude to another individual was spoken so highly about, um, or not spoken so highly, just being rude to another individual was looked down upon. So how is it that these individuals did this to me? Because in my head, I had them at a high, I, I had them on a high platter. I had them I thought very highly of these people. I thought that I can trust them. I thought that I can rely on them to 
be decent human beings, but unfortunately that's not the case with most people. With some people, when they find a person who's vulnerable, who is weak energy-wise, who looks like they don't have much fight left into in who don't feel like they have much fight left in them, that's easy prey. That's an easy target. That makes it easier for them to just sick their teeth into you and just continue their the just continue the abuse. Continue, evolve, whatever the case may be. But the case of Maryam Muhammad, this poor 24-year-old girl was just walking down the street. Um, she was walking home from work and she was walking in the city of Madi. And as she was walking, there were still people on the street. There was plenty of witnesses to this crime. At first, they seen a white van driving by. They then decided to catcall or harass her as she was walking down the street. And this girl was in a hijab. She was veiled. She was wearing conservative clothing. So how is it that a woman who's wearing conservative clothing, a woman who has her hair covered, is being harassed by these men? How is it that this woman is minding her own business walking down the street and she has done nothing to no one and she is then harassed and catcalled by these men whom she ignores. She didn't even respond to. She didn't even call them out of their names, didn't say anything to them. And when they didn't get a response and they got ignored, just as the male ego is so fragile, these men decided to take it upon themselves and go ahead and run this poor girl over. So she was found dead on the street. There was plenty of witnesses to this crime. Now, there has been such an outcry on Twitter from all of these women who are trying to speak up and then these ignorant people who respond back saying that we're now feminists, that we are, the next step for us is to be lesbians. No, absolutely not. Just because we're speaking up for the people that can't speak for themselves because they are dead from a murderer who were harassing an innocent girl in the street, that does not make us feminist. Not only that, but when men behave like this and try to justify things to themselves, that takes away any justification from what the man did himself. How about we, we talk about what the accusers did? How about we talk about what they did wrong, not what the victim did wrong? Because at the end of the day, even though women are supposed to be wearing hijabs, wearing a veil, covering themselves, wearing conservative clothing, don't forget the next passage right after that in that surah speaks about a man averting his eyes. If you see something that is not right about a woman and how she is dressed and how she is looking and you, you cannot control yourself, then you need to take it upon yourself and walk away and turn away. It is not up to you to be the vid vigilante because I'm sure this is what you guys think, that you are being vigilant, upstanding citizens, that you are helping, you are doing, you're ridding this world of evil. But what are you talking about, sir? These women are not evil. They are normal women. These are women. And by the way, none of us are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we can judge others in this manner. Even for me, for just a week ago when I confronted my abuser, I got thrown all of those same excuses that it was my fault, that I should have never trusted him. I, I, they literally told me that, that I should have never trusted him even though he was raised with me, even though I know his entire family, even though... Okay, so thank you for letting me know what I already knew, that I put my trust in the wrong person. So when people find things like this happening to people that they know directly, there's something very specific that happens and occurs in the human mind. And the human mind tries to rationalize this. So the human mind doesn't want to break this character that they feel like they know this person. If I've known this person all these years, I have a good idea and sense 
and comfortability with this person and familiarity, right? So if I'm telling you something that goes against completely what you believe of this individual, your brain wants to rationalize it. It So it goes straight into, into denial sometimes, and I understand that. So when I confronted the individual, I understood the kind of backlash that I was going to get, and I was totally okay with it because at that point it became my sanity versus theirs versus my comfortability. I'd rather be sane and feel happy and feel comfortable in my own house and not see this individual back here versus me staying quiet and letting this individual keep making me uncomfortable from seeing him at family parties, from seeing him at my own house almost every day. No, I had to put my foot down and I, I already knew I was going to get that backlash, but I did not care at that point. My sanity meant more. My comfortability me meant more to me. And for, for me to just be able to understand that this is what goes on in those people's heads, the one that do victim blame us, the one that do come at us and make us to be the bad guy when really they don't know how to deal with the abuser, with the people that are doing the actual wrong act. That just means that I have more empathy than any other person that I've encountered so far because I felt as though I should be mad. I felt as though I should want to hurt these people. And maybe I did for a few years. Maybe I did. But after a while, I'm telling you, once you want to be happy, you really just want to let all of that go. But at the same time, you want to hold people accountable. You don't want to enable these people and let them believe that they got away with it the first time so they can continue doing this to individuals, which is what happened with Ahmed Zaki. Why is it that a person feels that they can continue doing these acts it's because they feel that they can still get away with it and if you guys don't hold these people accountable well where is where are we gonna be in about 10 to 15 years what about when you have a daughter what about if this ever happened to your sister what about if this ever happened to your mother your aunt I'm sure that one of them has had some kind of sexual assault, harassment, something under that category. Because the, the statistics are is that one out of every three women has been sexually assaulted. One out of every five men has been sexually assaulted. So I think it's time to start holding these people accountable. I think it's time to start making some kind of changes to the way that we think and we the way that we try to process things. So keep Miriam Muhammad's name in your guys' mouths. Just take a look at what people are saying on Twitter about this. And we cannot let anyone sweep this under the rug no longer. It's time to stand up for our rights. It's time that women are being taken care of and protected versus being thrown under the bus. I'm so done with it and I'm, I'm sure that there are millions of women that feel the same way. But uh, until the rest of society catches up to us, beautiful women and beautiful men, who anyone, anyone who's ever been harassed or sexually abused or assaulted, just stay strong. Know that there are other people in the world that feel the same way, that understand you, that you are not crazy, you are not mental, that you are not anything but exactly who you're supposed to be so stay kind spread love and spread knowledge and i am hoping to see you guys in my next video don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you know when i upload hit the notification bell so you don't miss any video and i'll see you guys all next time stay beautiful and inshallah we'll all get through this together